Okay, so the problem for today is Aliona and strings, and this comes from code forces. It is a very good multidimensional DP problem. Multidimensional DP is not that difficult to visualize once you are able to find out a unique state. The state in DP is actually the main thing. Once you are able to find out a unique state in a DP, then the problem is done. So uh, I'll explain the question. Uh, the question is very simple. Uh, we are given two strings S and T. Uh, and Aliona is actually given a task of finding a sequence of k strings p1, p2 and so on up till pk where k is actually less than equal to 10 which is the catch so we are the task of Aliona is to find out sequence of k strings and these strings should be non-empty and the condition is that the summation of the lengths of pi should be maximum. Now, uh, these two strings S and T which are given to us can be written in a form of A1, P1, A2, P2 and so on up till AK, PK, AK plus 1. Similarly, T can be written in the form of B1, P1, B2, P2 and so on up till bk, pk, bk plus 1. Here b1, b2, bk and a1, a2, ak all, all of them can be empty as well. However, p1, p2, p up till pk are not allowed to be empty. This is given that there is for sure some summation that exists for these cases like this some sequence of k non-empty strings that exists, but we need to actually find out the maximum amongst them. I hope the question is clear to you. If it isn't, then you can check it out on code forces. So once you are clear with the problem statement, you need to think of a unique state in the DP, right? So DP is very useful in the cases of maximization, minimization and finding out the number of ways. So dp is a good alternative to solve this question or maybe the only alternative to solve this question so now let's think of what can the state be like obviously if you are standing at a position then the state has to contain some index in the string s and the index in the string t at which you are standing but is that enough? According to me, this cannot be enough to solve this DP problem because this does not define a unique state. This does not define a unique state because if we are on some idxth position in the string s and on some ith position in the string t, then we aren't aware of how many we aren't aware of how many strings how many pks or P, pk strings have we processed right standing at a particular position we aren't aware of this thing right so we do not know that how many more we need to process this k is in exact terms. So we need to find out exactly k amongst them. So if we aren't aware of how many we have already formed or how many we have to form further, this state seems to be a bit loose for that. So I need to incorporate something which stores me, which stores for me the remaining substrings that are to be found out like this is in terms of pk now 
but still is this enough this does this define a unique dp state is the question now once you are able to realize this dp state then the point is that it may happen that you have some remaining substrings in terms of pk like you have five substrings that are still need to be formed but it may be that including the idxth position and idxth position you may be at some particular substring let's assume that if you are having p1 to p5 you may have that p3 of length 5 so in this case it's for sure that you have two remaining substrings from here but if you are at the second position of p3 then actually p3 has not been completed yet right so like if p3 was a b c d e then if you are at the bth position and you need to jump on to some next position which contains c then you need to ensure this fact that like let's take it into a different scenario like for example if you have p1 to p5 and you know that these two are remaining amongst this so the so you will have some values of idx and idxt with you and you'll have the remaining substrings to be two but this isn't unique because if you are at the second position in p3 then also this dp is same and if you are at the third position in p3 then also the state remains the same that's the issue so we have two different states existing uh, however uh, we have combined those state into just one state so this is surely not a unique state because two states correspond to this particular point for example if we are at the second position a b in p3 then also we have two remaining substrings and similarly if we are at the third position then also we have two remaining substrings so actually there's some flaw over here so we need to maintain some something that keeps gives me the continuity continuity assurance of the string on which i am for example if i am on the string p3 then then actually i need to keep a continuity insurance over here the continuity insurance would be something like if I am on the second position and I need to continue making the string p3 then I need to send a 1 to the next dp state saying that I want to continue something and if I want to terminate the p3 string over here I will take the help of 0. So this is very simple to visualize that now we need to add something which stores the continuity as well as the fourth dimension so if i have something like idx s idx t remaining substrings and continuity as my dp state then it would surely be unique because at each dp state i want to know whether i need to continue that previous substring or not so that's why we require something like a continuity in our dp and therefore this is the fourth dimension in our dp state this makes it to be a four D D P state. 
However, the remaining substrings would obviously be less than equal to 10 and the continuity will always be less than equal to uh, 1. Yeah. So, that's how we'll solve this question. Let's see the multiple cases that we have to analyze over here. So, the case could be that if we have a continuity coming from the back, like if continuity is equal to 1, this means that we need to do something in this dp state to either continue that particular string or terminate that. So, I will be reliant on dp idx, uh, idx s plus 1. and maybe I am staying over here only in this dp. If this is the case, then actually I am not extending the length of my particular substring on which I am standing. So, solve of idx s plus 1, idx t, the remaining substrings count would actually stay out to be the same because it was in continuity only and I am not adding some new string to it. And the continuity would actually change out to be 0. Because I am actually skipping someone in the x, x sth position. So, I cannot ensure the continuity now. now some the other case would be very simply be idx t plus 1 comma the remaining would still say out to be the same and 0 again. Now it may also happen that I continue the particular case. So it would be idx s plus 1 idx t plus 1 remaining comma 1. But this could be only done when s of idx s is equal equal to t of idx t. That is the case. And even if they are equal, then also we may prefer to skip this, right? This would be something like this, right? But this is already incorporated over here. So, we do not need to specially write this solve condition. There could be one more case where wherein we have no transitions at all, but that stays out to be there and we do not need that case, right. So, we have just these three cases and we will be finding out the maximum all of these. Here, one would be added to the answer. This is very simple because we are actually including this in the part of our substring. So, that is why 1 is added over here, while the other cases progress without adding a 1. Now, this is the case when continuity comes from the back. What happens if continuity does not come from the back? So, else, I will state it, but you do not need an else if, you will just need an else, else if cont is equal to 0, I will be having again the same cases idx s plus 1 idx t remaining and 0. This is because I am skipping again, this is idx 
s i dx t plus 1 remaining and 0. However, if s of i dx s is equal equal to t of i dx t, then I have a choice of adding 1 into my answer and then solving for i dx s plus 1, i dx t plus 1 remaining minus 1 and 1. So here I have done remaining minus 1 because since I have started a new substring from here and I know that there was no previous substring that could be continued, therefore I will have one lesser substring right now to be made. So remaining minus 1 and 1 is to ensure that I am passing something which is continuous. So it will be the max amongst all of these. So if continuity is equal equal to 1 then we have 3 cases and if continuity is equal equal to 0 then we have again 3 cases but the only difference is of rem and rem minus 1 which is very evident because that is why we were requiring a continuity state over here. This basically gives a proof of why the continuity state is required and uh, hence this is an easy solution to this. And this is how we are going to solve this problem. Uh, more details of this question would be clear uh, when we code this out. Thank you so much.